Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt, and the pattern I'm going to be tying tonight is called the Atherton Light. It's another John Atherton's classic nymph patterns, very similar to the Atherton Number no. 2, which is a dark pattern with a blue wing case. This one is a cream colored body with a gold wing case and a gold thread head. So a very effective pattern. I think you're going to enjoy it, so stick around. Most of us have seen Atherton number no. two, his dark colored nymph. This was very similar. Instead of a dark body with a blue wing case, this is a cream colored body with a gold wing case and gold thread. So I will explain the materials as I go and put the recipe in the description. So I'm tying this on a size 12 barbless nymph hook. I am using gold 70 denier UTC. So let's lay down a base, but we're not going to take it all the way back. And this one we're going to tie the hackle on first. Now you don't have to, but I think it's just a bit easier. So the hackle on this guy is partridge. So take a Hungarian partridge, small slip of a feather there, and what you want to do, see we're going to tie it on I'll show you the tie-in point, how to figure that out. We're going to fold it back over on itself. So about however long you want the hackle to be, have that much sticking out above the eye of the hook. So we're going to want it about right there. I'm going to bring this back up about two turns. And then like you do often with Hungarian partridge, just create a little tie-in point right there. I'm going to go ahead and snip that off, leave a small little triangle. You see that one? Give me a good solid tie-in point right there. And take my thread back. I'm going to get about three wraps on this thing. So it's not a real sparse hackle, but three wraps of Hungarian partridge is not going to be real thick anyway. So. There's one, just pull these back and keep going. There's two, try to preen that back there and there's my third one. So let's see if I can zigzag my thread through here without trapping any of these that I don't want. Okay. I think we got it right there. Go ahead and snip this excess off. And then those loose feathers right there. So I'm going to catch my stem in. Okay. We got a few scragglies there, but here's what we want to do on this one. Go ahead and pull it forward. See how they're sticking forward of the eye there? Uh, let's get a couple of, can be loose wraps. It doesn't have to be tight just yet. And let's go ahead and wrap this up here. Now take a look at it, pull it back. Is that going to be enough for your eye? I think so. So that's about as far up as we want to come. Now we'll bring the thread back to the bend of the hook for the tail. And the tail on this is just mallard flank fibers. This one in a wood duck color. So a good, they're pretty thin, so a good 10, 12 or so fibers. Pull off right there. I'm going to try to keep the ends lined up before I snip that off. I'm going to snip it about right there. Now find your position. I want it to come a little bit angled down. Not like, not that much, but not straight off the back of the hook and about a hook gap in length. So let's go ahead and get two wraps right there and check our position. Okay. I think that's fine right there. So I'm going to secure this right here and I will go ahead and trim the butt ends of these off. You don't have to worry about making a real smooth body here because it's dubbed with some 
pretty fuzzy fur. So the next component is just some medium tinsel. This is gold and French oval. Got a, a, a spare fiber right there. Okay, so catch this in at a 45 degree angle and then you can pull it flat. So just lock that in right there. Bring this to the back about where we want to start wrapping. Okay, back it off a couple of lengths. Wax your thread and get some cream colored dubbing. I'm using rabbit. You could use, you could use synthetic, but I like the, the rabbit and the Atherton nymphs. It gives it a pretty buggy look. So I'm going to wrap a, a fairly tight noodle right here. I might have to tighten it up a little bit into it. So I'm going to put one wrap on, see if I can pull it a little bit tighter. And then, okay, before I really get started, I'm going to put one wrap behind my rib right there. Okay. That just kind of hides your first wraps of the rib. I think it looks a little bit better. So you want enough dubbing to get you two-thirds the way up this body. And a bit of a taper if you can make it happen. Okay, we got a little bit of a taper there. Now counter wrap your, your gold tinsel, your rib. On a fly this size, probably four wraps will be sufficient, maybe five. Okay, I think that's five right there. Now this is soft tinsel, so you can't spin it off. You're going to have to snip it. The next piece is gold dyed yellow, either goose or duck feathers. So a little slip, not quite gap of a hook. That would be a little bit too much for this wing case. So lay this on top, a loose wrap, and then a second loose wrap or so to check your position before you commit to it. Take a look on top and see, are you where you want to be? I think that's about where we want to be. So now we can go ahead and secure this in. And now we'll wrap the thorax. A little bit more wax on here. That same dubbing we just used. A little bit less this time. You do want the thorax to be a little bit thicker than the body. But obviously it's not as long, so I'm going to dub this fairly tight right here. couple of wraps, and then I'm going to go back over that wing case. And then finish it off right there. Might have a little bit of cleanup. We've got some fibers coming off there. So now pull your wing case over. Take your time here. Get it situated where you want it. Now this just provides a small amount of a, a hot spot for that. So that's going to be enough right there. I'm going to pull it back and get one in front of it and then another one behind it just to really lock that in before we reach in here and snip this off as close as we can get it. Now if you've got, oh, one of these things, what's this, a half hitch tool? And you get lucky, you can just put that over there to push these back and then tie it in. I usually just do it with my fingers, just kind of grab them all and preen them back. I think I have a little bit more control when I'm doing it with my fingers. So I'll do that right there and then start wrapping my head. You can take a look at it halfway if you want. Make sure you're coming off eh, kind of all the way around it there. We want some of these fibers all the way around. Now I got a couple of rogue guys sticking out the front right here. I'm going to go ahead and trim these off. You might be able to bury them in your head if you go back to the front like that right there. But you don't want to build up too much of a head. So when you're happy with the, the taper you've got on your head right there, you don't have any black showing under your translucent gold thread. 
a four or five turn whip finish, then we'll do some cleanup. Pull that tight, slide your scissors in, you don't even have to snip them. So you might, might see a little bit of, of fuzz on that body right there. You might not see enough fuzz and you'll want to take your dubbing brush and pull some of it out. But I think we've got enough right there. So a drop of head cement right there and the Atherton Light Nymph is done. So as always folks, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you will consider subscribing. And that's all. We'll see you next time.